Let's see. We have Kevin Soley. Join the meeting. Kevin, Bruce, Ann, and Mike. So I think we have a full complement of, of full commission members. Um, so no appointment, no, no alternates need to be appointed. Um, the first order of business is the <clears throat> approval of the minutes. Um, I'd like to defer that because we had a new clerk last time, and I think we uh, we need to work on the minutes a little bit. And uh, so Mike and I'll uh, work on that, and we'll uh, bring them up again next time. We have no public hearings, and the uh, I believe that uh, our old business application 20-09 of uh, Mark and Iki Scully, uh, they've asked us to defer or to table it again. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, they're, they're working on uh, revised drawings uh, to address some of the design review board's comments. And unfortunately, the, the, the architect did not complete the drawings for tonight's meeting. So the, they're, they're asked to continue it for the next two weeks. Okay. Do we have to move to uh, table it? You, you're in, you're within your statutory time, so you could have no action. Already tabled. Okay, the next order of business is application 20-10 of uh, Albany Turnpike LLC, the owner. Um, Kevin Sully is going to give us a little uh, presentation of the plans for the development of um, 9 to 915 Albany Turnpike. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I might, uh, my name is David Markowitz. Uh, I represent the owner 915 Albany Turnpike LLC. I'm a partner in Hassett and George in Sillsbury. Now, if I could just have one moment and then I'll introduce Kevin. Um, the property that my client owns contains approximately. Join the meeting. Joins appro contains approximately 26 acres of which approximately 5.8 acres is in Canton, and the remaining of the acreage is in Simsbury. Uh, with me today is Kevin Solly. He'll uh, present the plans for you. Uh, also joining us today is my client, uh, Mark Greenberg. I don't believe he's on yet, but I expect him to join. And Richard Correa, our real estate consultant of RM Bradley. Uh, as you know, and as you can see on the screen, this is an application for site plan approval for the development of a portion of my client's property <clears throat> that faces Albany Turnpike. The site plan contains a gas station and convenience store, uh, which is entirely in Canton, and an electric vehicle showroom, which is in Simsbury in Canton. Uh, also on the call tonight uh, with us is our architect who can respond to any questions that you may have about uh, the EV showroom, which is in uh, both Simsbury and Canton. And now I'll turn the meeting over to Kevin and he can go through the plans with you. And then we can all address any questions or comments that you may have. Good evening, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Kevin Soley. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Connecticut with Soley Engineering, offices located at 501 Main Street on Monroe, Connecticut. Um, so David, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, so as David indicated, tonight we're here to talk about an application at 9 and 15 Albany Turnpike. So just to orient everyone, so here is an aerial of the town of Simsbury. Uh, this site is located um, just in the south uh, west corner of the of the town, um, kind of right at the intersection or right along the town line between Canton and Simsbury, just north of the town line between Simsbury and Avon. So uh, as uh, David indicated, the overall site is approximately 26 acres. Um, it's comprised of two parcels. There's a small parcel out front, which is nine Albany Turnpike, which is approximately five point eight or uh, uh, two acres and then a larger parcel, the, the majority of it is 23.8 acres. Um, and as David indicated, uh, there's approximately 5.8 acres in Canton and approximately 18 acres in Simsbury. You can see the town line runs north-south and it bifurcates the property in this manner here. So about 
little over five acres in uh, Canton and then the balance all in Simsbury. Um, I'm, I'm sure everyone is very familiar with the site. As you drive up 44 into Canton, you can see once you pass the, the Best Buy Plaza and you continue north, you can see a little bit of um, some rock outcropping and a uh, pretty extensive uh, vegetated area. There's some pretty extensive grade change across the property. And then you hit the old Brass Lantern Road where the La Trattoria restaurant is. And that uh, Brass Lantern obviously has a loop. Um, so we're uh, essentially um, along the uh, southern end or the easterly end of that Brass Lantern Road um, entrance is where our uh, primary site drive is going. And what we're proposing is a what, what I'm what I'm really excited about, and I like to kind of call the future of transportation um, from from an overall project standpoint. Um, so our project is uh, uh, proposed for the front portion of the property, immediately along the front edge with uh, Route 44. And what it includes is it includes two the construction of two buildings, an 8,300 square foot uh, gas station uh, with convenience store. But this also has a number of other elements to it. We're proposing a uh, drive-through, um, potentially with a coffee shop inside. There would also be a sandwich shop located inside this facility, and also potentially an ice cream shop. Um, so what we've done is we've Betty tried to create a place Fiora. Really Join the meeting. Um, trying to create something more than just your standard gas station with a convenience store, but it provides a number of other elements to it. Um, now, I want to point out here, here's the town line between Canton and Simsbury. So while the majority of the development as part of this project is, is primarily in Canton, there is a portion of the site in Simsbury. I'm going to present the overall project, um, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions that the commission has. But obviously, we know that we're here primarily for a portion of the project that's in Simsbury. Um, and just for the record, we did actually go to design review for this project uh, earlier tonight, and we did have a very uh, favorable uh, recommendation to this commission for your consideration. Um, so, so back to the project. So, so this facility really is, is more than just your standard convenience store. And then out front, we have the um, uh, fueling uh, locations, and the gas station itself is being designed to really accommodate um, uh, and to be able to adapt to the future trends that we see happening with automobiles and the fact that um, a lot of these fueling stations are also being, des are, are being designed so they can actually be replaced with um, rapid speed electric vehicle charging stations. So, so not just, you know, um, relying on fossil fuels and, and gas powered automobiles, but also preparing for the future um, and electric vehicles and the prevalence that we see coming with that. And that really brings us to the second part of the project, which is a 23,500 square feet electric vehicle showroom and service center. Now this is the building located here, which is further east or south on 44, and a portion of this building is located actually in Simsbury. So this is a, uh, a two-story facility, um, almost primarily within- Join the meeting. And this is, is gonna be the electric vehicle showroom, and it's been designed to actually accommodate um, uh, up to four uh, or uh, four tenants for these electric vehicle manufacturers. So um, if you think of uh, some of the some of the electric vehicle manufacturers, Rivian, uh, Boynton, a, a number of other ones that you may not be too uh, familiar with the names, but this is a place where they can come and they can um, have their vehicles on display. You can come in, you can test drive, you can see them, um, and then you can basically order them to be delivered to your home. And then the second part of the facility is a single story uh, service area which would be located primarily in Simsbury, which is located in this location here. Uh, access to the site would be provided through a proposed full movement driveway um, with a proposed traffic signal uh, uh, located along the um, western edge or the northerly edge of the property, and then a second right in, right out driveway um, a little bit further east or south, kind of in between the two proposed buildings to provide adequate access and, and circulation through the site. Uh, the electric vehicle showroom and service area, uh, we've designed it so it actually has a, uh, a covered area of some um, electric vehicle charging stations and then service, there'd be access to the service through this circle here in front of the building and another egress for the service up to the uh, north or eastern end of the site through here. Um, the, as you uh, include in our package is a, a gradient drainage plan. Our stormwater management system has been designed in accordance with 
the 2004 stormwater quality manual as provided by the DEEP and also the town of Sinsbury uh, drainage requirements. Um, a little bit of a unique site as we've had to uh, contend with not only the requirements of the town of Sinsbury, but also the town of Canton. So our uh, design drawings have been prepared, really looking at the overall site to make sure that we're able to comply with both communities' um, requirements. The uh, we do have some pretty extensive grading required to accommodate the project. As you can see here, um, if you follow my, my uh, cursor, there's, uh, there's an existing home on the property in this location here, and we're proposing to, and right behind that, there's a pretty steep hill that kind of runs along in this location here. We're proposing some pretty extensive earthwork and uh, removal of material to really accommodate this developed area uh, we're proposing a, uh, a stabilized rock face to the north or to the rear of the site, which would really um, focus and enhance and highlight some of the, uh, 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 the, the trap rock in this area, create a, create a nice facade for uh, this excavation for this um, uh, rock face uh, retaining wall excavated area through here. There is a point where that retaining wall transitions from being in a cut condition to being in a fill condition. We have a small portion of the site within Simsbury, which would be filled to accommodate this development to kind of create this level pad um, for this overall project. Our, as, uh, as you come across the site, um, driving across 44, you, as you know, you're kind of driving up a hill. Our driveway location was selected because we wanted to put it as close to that, uh, the top of that hill as possible to maximize uh, visibility and for site distances for vehicles entering and exiting the project. Um, and as you come further south or east, um, as you know, Route 44 you know, comes up in grade pr pretty considerably. So the right and right out is almost acting as a, as a ramp or a driveway up to a higher elevation pad. Um, uh, part of our design is we wanted to try to maintain as much of the existing uh, rock face that you see out there. So you can see we're actually maintaining a pretty good portion so that aesthetic will remain, um, but we're simply reducing the overall height and then um, kind of reestablishing that that same aesthetic behind the project uh, in this location here. Um, the, uh, we have a soil erosion and sediment control plan, which is prepared in accordance with the uh, soil erosion sediment control manual provided by DEEP and also in accordance with both the town of Canton and town of Simsbury requirements. Um, from a utility standpoint, we are proposing all underground utilities to service the facility. Um, those would come uh, from Route 44 uh, in Canton uh, and then come up the main driveway and then to provide uh, sewer, water, electric, um, and gas all from uh, Albany Turnpike um, underground and then across the property here. So, so that we are proposing that the building that's partially in Canton and Simsbury to be serviced through utilities uh, through Canton. Um, we've included a, a, a robust landscape plan as part of our application. We have uh, some pretty extensive plantings. Um, one, of the, one of the benefits of our site is since the, the overall intent is to create something that's um, more than just your standard gas station or, or anything like that, is we've actually been able to design some pretty extensive outdoor seating areas um, adjacent to the proposed uh, gas convenience station here. We have a fire pit. We've created a really nice aesthetic, so it's a place where you can come and 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 plug in your you know plug in your electric vehicle for for you know 10 to 12 minute rapid charge session, and then go inside, grab a sandwich, grab some ice cream, um, sit outside and kind of enjoy the ambiance of the and the aesthetics of the place. The electric vehicle sh service and showroom. We're actually able to incorporate a very large landscape island uh, located in this location here and provide some additional outdoor seating. Um, some pretty nice landscaping through here to really kind of create a nice environment um, that's inviting and, it, and, it's a, and it's a place where you can kind of go and, 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 uh, and enjoy beyond just um, going to either fill up your tank of gas or, or going to um, find a, a potential new electric vehicle. The uh, lighting plan included in your submission package has been prepared in accordance with both Town of Canton and Sinsbury requirements. Um, we have a series of light poles throughout the project, but they're all designed to be dark sky compliant fixtures. So that's a, a recessed light, a recessed bulb that casts down on the pavement to eliminate or to avoid glare. Just wait and one sec. I can't get into it on my iPad. I 
can get into it on the computer. I can watch it going on. I'm not sure if we can uh, mute whomever that is. There we go. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike. <clears throat> Um, so our lighting plan has been designed in accordance with everyone's requirements and we're able to minimize glare. Again, the, the site topography kind of keeps all these lights um, within the site where we have a, a, a retaining wall screen to the to, to behind the site. And then again, we're kind of going to be up in the air a little bit um, and we're able to maintain a pretty large vegetated buffer between the uh, Best Buy uh, site and our project. So there's some pretty good landscaping being maintained through this area with, with with uh, uh, tall trees um, and things like that to, to prevent uh, too much visibility from the, our development to the, to the south or to the east. Um, included in our submission package, we did prepare a comprehensive traffic impact study as part of the project. Um, and we have had initial conversations with the Department of Transportation. Um, this project uh, will be going through a review process with uh, the district for the um, for the Department of Transportation. As part of our traffic study, we actually analyzed 11 intersections um, throughout the corridor, a uh, number in Simsbury, a number in Avon, and, and the balance in Canton. Um, through our uh, proposed traffic analysis, uh, we have certain tools that we can use as traffic engineers. We anticipated a potential trip generation. Uh, my problem is that I am currently on a Zoom call. I've always been... Um, we are, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, uh, we use trip generation rates established by the Institute of uh, Transportation Engineers and determine what the anticipated number of trips that would be generated by our proposed development. We then go out and uh, uh, evaluate uh, traffic volumes for the corridor, the area roadway network. We determine the traffic operating conditions on how these intersections will operate under existing conditions under background conditions if the project wasn't to be constructed, and then we apply our proposed trip, gener trip generation to the network um, to determine how the, how the roadway network will operate after our project is constructed. And thankfully, we've been able to demonstrate that the project will maintain acceptable levels of service throughout the corridor. And um, as part of our review with our proposed traffic signal, we will be going through a process with the Department of Transportation both in the district office and also up in Newington. Um, so uh, this commission and, and everyone can have additional um, comfort that there's an additional layer of review and permitting associated with our proposed project. Um, to focus on the building proposed in Simsbury, we do have our proposed floor plans and elevations, which I'll go through um, uh, not in too much detail, but again, as I mentioned, the maintenance area which is actually primarily in the town of Simsbury. It just so happens our town line kind of runs right through this location here. So the, the, the service area is, is entirely within Simsbury. The portion of the building that's in Canton is the larger uh, showroom. And this is proposed to be two stories up along the front of the property here. And this is designed to really kind of accommodate up to four potential electric vehicle manufacturer tenants. So you'd be able to come in, there'd be kind of a quadrant on each side on each floor so that this could be um, one make of electric vehicles. There'd be a second set on the first floor here. It's been designed with a car elevator coming in from outside to either allow vehicles to come into the first floor or come up to the second floor. And then on the second floor, um, we've, uh, Phase Zero and, and Chris Milliards, who's here to answer any questions the commission may have, they designed a really, really cool building, which is really being uh, designed to be a prototype for something that um, could be rolled out on a, on a, on a state from a, from a state standpoint. And this really is going to serve as that first prototype for, for, for this type of facility with um, uh, to provide the residents of Simsbury and the surrounding area, the opportunity to go find and, and really uh, experience and understand the electrical vehicles that are, that are uh, coming into the market and give them a place to go, see them uh, test drive them and then order something that they might want to uh, want to purchase and take home. And they've been able to design the building so it has a very, very large open uh, entranceway. Um, so this is all open to below from the second level. And the second floor is, again, is another vehicle showroom, again, split in half. So there'd be a separate, se se uh, separate tenant here and then on this side. Another really interesting component that we've, that we've built into the design is actually a rooftop patio um, above the maintenance uh, uh, portion of the, of the building. Um, this would be access from the second floor, a place to have um, 
you know, uh, small gatherings or events or things like that. And then the balance of the roof of the uh, maintenance building, we're designing to potentially be a green roof to provide some additional uh, aesthetics when you're up here. And I think um, one of the other benefits of the site is how the site's positioned, the elevations of the property, and how Route 44 continues to, to drop in grade as you go back towards Sinsbury and then into Avon. The views from this, from this roof patio are really going to be uh, quite something. Um, and we think you're going to be able to really see all of Avon Mountain and, and, and even further. It's going to be a really, really interesting um, place, to, place to be. Uh, we have our architectural elevations, um, which, again, we, we were able to present these to the design review board, and they, they viewed them very favorably. Um, it's a little bit hard to see the black and white elevations through these Zoom meetings, um, but you can see this is a side view kind of uh, facing the Best Buy. You can see that the limits of the two stories, which, again, Route 44 would be here on the left side of your screen, the two-story um, showroom area, and then the single-story service area with the rooftop uh, patio and then the, the green roof. But what I'd like to show you is some of the elevations that uh, joined the meeting. Zero have been able to pull together that really kind of highlights and, and shows what we're excited of is really going to be a, a great focal point for the town of Simsbury and, and the town of Canton as you kind of come through this part of 44. So this is this is uh, on Route 44, uh, kind of looking up towards the site. You can see we've been able to maintain. A good, a good chunk of that um, existing uh, trap rock, rock elevation. And then um, you can see towards the right side of the screen, this is the service area. This is probably actually the town line, roughly right here, where that transition between single story and two story comes into play. And then as you kind of come across, um, this would be traveling up Route 44. And this, this drive here is actually the right in, right out driveway that comes in between the proposed um, electric vehicle showroom, and then the uh, gas convenience station would be on the left-hand side off the screen. One of the things we've been able to do and show in this picture is that we are trying to focus on creating a really nice aesthetic for this stabilized rock face wall behind the project. Um, we think that this is really going to serve a great purpose in kind of, we understand and recognize that there's an aesthetic to this rock face that, that, um, uh, certainly offer some character, some character for, for, for both communities. And rather than simply saying we're going to eliminate it or, 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 or um, uh, you know, create a project that's going to be a detriment to it, we really feel we're able to highlight that resource and really kind of create a central focal point behind the facility and provide a, a really nice aesthetic for how that, uh, how that rock face should be um, uh, in the future once the project is, is finished. And then as we come further into the site, this would actually look at look this would be looking back at the main entrance so the again the town line kind of runs right through the building here um the service area is to the left and as i mentioned before we have a ring of uh, electric vehicle charging stations and we're proposing a canopy above that so it can actually be something that you can you can pull in and you can uh, get out plug in your car and, and still be protected from from rain and the elements and then uh, this is kind of the main focal point of the entrance into the showroom area. Again, this is actually all in Canton, but we wanted to, again, show the commission the overall aesthetic of, of what we're looking at. And then just a little bit zoomed out, you can see this is the actual elevator, the access from, from outside where you'd be able to pull in vehicles to bring them up to that second level showroom um, or even onto the first floor. And then here's an image of our, so this is up on the rooftop patio looking back towards the north. Um, so, uh, this is kind of that, that rock face in the background. And you can see, as you look to the right, this would be looking, starting to look down, um, more into Simsbury. And then obviously if you're facing route 44, which would be kind of away from the screen, um, you'd be able to see that, that hill from, from Avon Mountain. And then you'd have one more, a um, really nice rendering at a, at a, at a nice time of day, just to kind of show what, um, what the uh, architectural style and design is, um, um, I personally think that, that the, the team at Phase Zero did a fantastic job pulling together a really interesting concept here. And again, we're excited because this will really serve to be a prototype for um, something that we think is going to be a great addition to not only these communities, but really is a benefit to the, to the state and the region as a whole. Um, anywhere where we can provide this opportunity to get people into um, 
kind of a more renewable form of transportation with this electric vehicle. We're really excited about. And the overall project as a whole, it was a fun one to be a part of on the design side because it really is focused on, again, what I said before, the future of transportation in terms of trying to um, uh, be, be nimble and agile and create a product and a project that can uh, be um, getting away from fossil fuels with that focus on uh, sustainability and things like that. So we're really excited about um, the project as a whole. Um, uh, obviously, we understand that a very small component of the project is in, is in Simsbury. Um, and we do, we are in the process with the town of Canton. I actually have a meeting tomorrow night with the Conservation Commission and a public hearing with planning and zoning later this month um, in the town of Canton. But uh, we wanted to obviously, we obviously have a portion in Simsbury. We wanted to come to the commission, talk through our project and solicit any feedback or comments you may have. Thank you. Commission members. Anybody have some questions or comments? Um, I guess I have two questions. Um, one, the, the, I mean, it's the Canton part of the building, but those little jet outs where they, uh, which were really cool, where the cars are on display, will you actually be able to see those cars from 44? Um, Hang on one second. Uh, I, I do believe you will, since those are going to be, those are going to be kind of up in the air. And yeah. I think I lost my, hang on, I think I lost my camera. I think you guys really want to see my face, but um, yeah, they're, they're kind of up in the air and we've designed it with all glass facades so that it really can um, create a, a really nice aesthetic and an image. Um, so we do think that you're going to be able to see those. And then we've also provided beneath those kind of uh, jut outs, uh, some locations underground for some additional, you know, car display directly underneath. Um, so I we just, do think you're gonna be able to see that yeah, just, in 44. I just worry about the angle there, whether, you know, you're showing it up, your, your, your um, rendering is a little higher than the road. Um, and the other thing is those white panels that are behind it, can we make sure that they're, are they translucent or are they solid? Like this the is Chris. There. Yeah, that, those would be solid. This is okay. Chris from Paseo yep. Design. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Just making sure because we have another issue where we were surprised when. Trans well, actually, actually, let let me uh, let me make sure I understand. When you say translucent panels, are you talking about to the right side of this rendering? Any, any, any of the facade of the building. Right. On, on the right side, where the the single story portion of the building is located in Simsbury, those panels along the top would be a, a glass glass window to bring light into the, the service center. Yeah, well, what about below that? Uh, below that would be solid, a solid yeah, okay. panel. All right, just making sure they're not lit panels. No, I don't, I don't we, we're not proposing any uh, backlit panels right now. I, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken though, I think uh, Toyota has that on their facade. Yeah, right, we didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, it's not, that is not the intention. Okay, very futuristic, it's kind of cool. Donna? Oh, it's a great project. I, I like it a lot. Um, the only thing that concerned me in reading um, through the report and everything were um, how much rock are you taking out? How long is that going to take you? I, so I have a concern noise wise, I guess. Because I notice uh, you know, they're, they're, Saturdays, Saturdays are solid for uh, for construction as well, and um, you know I, I wouldn't want to live there. But it, it's just a it's just a join question. the meeting. So you know there, there is there, as I stated before. I mean there is a decent amount of cut and excavation required to develop the property, and yeah. I think that's part of the reason why the property hasn't been developed for as many years. Um, you know, we're the, the the property owner now, and the applicant is is excited in, in creating a development that can um, kind of uh, support the the work required. So so we do have a, a fairly large cut towards the back, as I mentioned. Um, right. There will uh, there will be a need to remove a good amount of material and to process that material so it can be um, utilized on site. Um, but there will be some export. And again, there is a transition be between where that wall becomes a cut down to a, to a fill wall. Um, so there will be uh, a lot of activity. We think we're, um, 
you know, we think that work can be completed in um, probably 12 to 15 months um, from an excavation standpoint. Um, but the, the goal is obviously to get the gas station convenience store open as soon as possible and prepare the site for the electric vehicle showroom and get that in in accordance with, um, you know, all the, the, the timing considerations that we're, that we're looking at. Yeah. So 12 months of Saturday. Uh... Ann Erickson. Mm. Join the meeting. I mean, that's my only concern, really. Everything else looks really fantastic, but uh, it's a lot of work to put up with on Saturdays. Um, Mostly, uh, there isn't much residential in that area. Yeah, well, it depends some, on how loud it is, I guess. Yeah. There's some West Mountain's not too far away. West Mountain Road to the north. Yeah, all right. Uh, and a house across the street. Ann? Yeah. yeah. Ann, do you have any comments? Um, I haven't been able to hear it. I've been able to watch it, but I have no sound. So I just called in on my cell phone. So I'm listening to you on the phone and watching it. So no, I have nothing to add right now. Okay, Bruce? Well, I, I want to, uh, I guess I'm not, uh, I, I didn't find that the response to how much rock is being removed very satisfactory. I'm surprised that at this point you can't identify you know, in some measure, how much rock is coming out of there? Uh, maybe you could tell us how it's it's going to be loosened. Is it going? Is there going to be blasting routinely to loosen that rock so it can be taken away? And if so, the, is there the project concern at all for all the the residents, while they don't, their you know proximity is debatable and, and how important it is. But for miles around, the residents in Simsbury are all on wells. And uh, I don't have any personal experience with wells or the disappointing things that can happen with uh, well owners when there is blasting. But um, is that the way that the methodology that's anticipated here, all that rock that is going to be removed is going to be the result of blasting? So the, the project will, will, will require blasting in order to remove a, a lot of this rock. Now, um, Blasting in itself is a very, very regulated um, activity. Uh, it requires, th this will require coordination with fire marshals in both Canton and Simsbury. And as part of any blasting operation, it's required, uh, the, the, the blaster is required to get um, permits from the fire marshals, but also do um, uh, uh, pre-blast surveys for all properties and all residences or structures within a, spe a specified radius. And, and, I'll, and I'll say that's a very important part of what happens when, any, when there's blasting for any project. Um, and what happens is before they can even get started, they have to go out to all these properties, inspect the buildings, um, uh, provide a, a, a pre-blast inspection report, um, uh, fully uh, document the conditions of the properties, understand um, what's going on with, with well service, if, if there's well water or anything like that. And they really document the conditions before any activity happens. And then during the blasting activity itself, as I stated, there's permits required from the fire marshals. There's notices that go out to all the all the surrounding properties in terms of when the blasts are going to happen. And then um, uh, they have to install size, seismographs around the property and at and at uh, some of the surrounding limits to actually uh, measure the readings and to verify and to confirm that there is no um, uh, uh, readings beyond what's permissible in the in the code, and um, and then throughout the project, if there's any damage or anything caused, the blaster is on the hook for that. And um, it's a it's a it's a it's much more of a science than the average person may realize in terms of how how material is blasted, how those blasts are designed, so that they can be so they can minimize uh, any disruption to any of the surrounding property owners minimize any potential damage to any surrounding structures um, and things like that. So it, so it is a very regulated and it's a very uh, precise science, actually, when, you, when, when blasting companies come in and look to remove material like this, because all the concerns that, that, that you have and everyone has, um, they're, they're, they're valid and they want to make sure that they can uh, operate a program, a blasting program, and not have damage. Because if something happens and if, and if there is damage and they're on the hook to replace it and to repair it, and to, and, to, and to address it. Um, so you. it is it, it is a very, yeah. I, I had something else I wanted to ask you about, but let me offer, uh, maybe you've already heard this, maybe not, but 
on Maureen Drive, which is just to the north off West Mountain Road and on West Mountain Road, there were residents in that area who complained of problems with their wells after the uh, work was done to expand the Hoffman Auto Park, in particular the uh, parking area that, oh, they don't call it parking, they call it vehicle storage that goes up to the north of their, uh, of their three buildings. So I, I will off, offer, you know, some um, concern on behalf of those residents that I don't know the details of what their problems were following the other building. And that goes back close to 15 years, 13 years, something like that. But, um, you know, I think it's, it, you know, the, the approach that's required by law and regulation sounds reasonable to me, but, it, you know, I'm sure bad things sometimes happen anyway. So I also wanted to ask about the uh, removal process of the uh, rubble uh, or rock or whatever. Do, uh, did I understand you to be you're suggesting that the transportation out of there would only be on Saturdays? Or, or, no, not not a no. So uh, yes, yeah, so five days no. a week, six days a week, there would be trucking in and out of that site to remove six many 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 truckloads of rock. Is that a fair statement? So so, so yes, and and that is something that um uh so the in in our in our um communication and coordination with staff we've, we've kind of had some preliminary discussions about the, the um uh rock removal and yeah. when those would be permitted from an hours of operation standpoint and we are we would propose that those would be able to happen on um you know monday through friday and then also well, monday through saturday actually with adjusted hours saturday so that would start later in the day not until 9 a.m um, but then absolutely no blasting or rock removal on uh, Sundays or on holidays. Um, the, so, so, so the material would be leaving the site, you know, throughout the week and on Saturdays. Um, and it would, and we want to do that actually to really spread it out so it can happen periodically throughout the day. And you're not going to have a rush of, of traffic from a construction vehicle standpoint at any one time. And we certainly wouldn't want to limit it to only Saturday because that would create a whole different type of, traffic pattern and, and we want to be able okay. to operate over longer periods of time to minimize that disruption. Well, I'm, I'm further interested in how the, where the trucks are going in and out. I'm sure you don't intend to wait until the traffic light and the driveways are done to start the blasting. So, you know, or maybe um, well, you do, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, where, 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 what access way will the trucks be using to go in and out of uh, so Route 44? So as, as part of our project, we are proposing to um, the uh, brass lantern right of way that currently is this kind of um, this loop road in front of La Trattoria. Um, so part of this process is we are looking to have the town of Canton actually convey that to these property owners. So our property line would actually come here, which is uh, a little bit north or west of the existing driveway location where Brass Lantern comes out. And, and if anyone who's been through here, obviously the geometry for Brass Lantern is not great. Um, and, you know, there's a very large rock knob in front of La Trattoria. We'd be removing a portion of that to, ma to maximize sight distance and to ensure that we have enough um, visibility in both directions. So, so that operation and vehicles from a construction standpoint would be coming through this end of brass lantern but we'd be able to to make modifications from an access standpoint during construction so that um some of those enhancements from a visibility standpoint from a geometry standpoint are taken into place now so that we can actually accommodate um this operation you know during construction and then uh, obviously prepare for this future driveway in the future so where the red cursor is right now is where the trucks are going to be entering and leaving route 44 during the course of Correct. the excavation and site work down there. Correct. Thank you. Mike, can I question? I, one other thing, when you talk to the people in Canton, I'm just surprised. It just doesn't, it strikes me as, uh, I don't know, it's surprising that there's going to be a fire pit at the gas station. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're going to be cooking hot dogs <laughs> or what, but a fire pit at the gas station sounds like hmm, potential uh, well, problem. Well, I think I think that's why, I, and, and that's why, kind of as I as I talk through my presentation, um, I don't want anyone to think of this as a normal gas station because that's really not what this is. What we're, what's being proposed as part of this? Again, this is 
you know, if you, if you're to go to, you know, e- even Cumberland farms or, or a similar type use like that, that, that convenience part, or that's that, that, you know, retail component of that um, facility is probably about 4,000 square feet. This, this is proposed to be 8,300 square feet. And what it does is we're actually designing it to have um, multiple different uh, operations inside. So yes, there's a, there's your typical convenience store, but there's also an ice cream shop. There's also a, a sandwich shop and there's also a, a coffee shop with the drive through So it's more than just your standard where you're going to go fill up a tank of gas. We're trying to make it more than that. So it's, so it goes be above and well above and beyond your standard gas convenience. And it really is more for, uh, you know, a place where you can go after, you know, a, a little league game and the team can go and they can go grab ice cream. They can sit outside. You know, we're trying to create something that's more than just your standard gas station. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mike, yes, sir. I, uh, I the Kevin started to address uh, as part of Diane's question um, uh, my question, which is: Is this site going to be built in phases, or is of the entire project going to be built at once? You know, is the convenience store and the uh, electric vehicle showroom and service center all going to be built as one project, or is the convenience store gas retail? going to get built and then someday maybe if we get enough interest the electric vehicle showroom and service building gets built so um because of the amount of uh earthwork required there likely will be um there could potentially be a point in time where uh we hope to open the gas station convenience store while the site work for the electric vehicle showroom is is ongoing um, you know, because as I said, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of material that has to come out and there's a lot of material that's got to get processed in order to, to, to leave the site. So we're, you know, a lot of that is going to be focused on prepping the signal for the new driveway, prepping this side to get this moving as quick as possible. And then the work is going to continue on going for the electric vehicle showroom. So, so um, there may be some phasing in terms of we're, we're hoping to get the site work for the gas convenience finished first while we finish the electric vehicle showroom. But it's not that, I'll tell you, there's already been several meetings with several of the electric vehicle um, manufacturers, and there's a tremendous amount of interest for this type of product, um, which is, which again, I think is really a benefit to the, to the town of Simsbury and the surrounding areas, because this really is kind of like a prototype for something that's, that's more than just your standard, you know, auto showroom. Um, again, you know, something that's focused entirely on electric vehicles and serving some of those, some of those smaller electric vehicle producers or manufacturers who aren't going to have your, their full, um, Ford dealership or, or Toyota dealership or things like that. This really kind of creates a, a different niche and there's a tremendous amount of interest already. And there's been talk about doing four to five of these across the state. This is really going to be that flagship. So, so there's a there's a desire to do this as, as quickly as possible because we think that's that's kind of the way of the future, and we want to be able to serve this this market. Well, selfishly, I am that market because I own one of those cars, and it would be amazing to have that about a mile and a half from my house. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I just you know sometimes projects like this come in front of us, and the part that's easy and already contracts are signed on get done, and then the other side just lead. You know the site work gets done and then it's well we don't have a tenant so we're not building it till we have uh you know somebody to fill it so that was that was kind of the precipice for my question so it'd be awesome to see it all bill so what is the what is the time frame that you're um, aiming for kevin you, you've got to get approvals from two towns two towns and the dot um, so we're, uh, we're, we're, we're optimistic um, that hopefully we'll, we'll have a, a quick path through this commission. Um, we probably expect to have a little bit of a heavier lift in the town of Canton, um, but we're hoping to be through their permit process uh, before the end of the year. Um, and then uh, we have some work to do with the DOT for the uh, roadway improvements and the signal design and signal approval, but we'd be optimistic to actually hopefully get started um, in, you know, early to mid 2021 to get this project underway from a construction standpoint. Do you, do you have a measure of the number of yards of, uh, material that you have to remove? Um, 
it's it's been somewhat fluid because we've been making some modifications to the to the design um uh there were some uh you know right before we submitted we had some minor tweaks to the to the uh, electric vehicle showroom um there's probably about uh maybe eighty thousand yards of material that has to get excavated to accommodate the development totally or just the the car building the auto building totally for the for the entire for the entire project and the lower part, the parts that's in Simsbury, that's going to be the maintenance area, you've got uh, four competing dealers and one maintenance area. Uh, how does that get apportioned? Well, that would actually be um, operated somewhat independently from the, from the sales in the showroom, where that's really focused on providing service to anybody with any electric vehicle. So, so Commissioner Doyle can, if, if he needs a service, he can bring it to here and get it serviced, uh, you know, by by technicians specifically trained in electric vehicles. Good. He's happy about that, I think. <laughs> Good. Um, anybody else have any more questions? Mike, do you um, you're here? There you are. Yes. Yes. You have given us a uh, your staff report. Anything that you would like to point out in your staff report? So just uh, two things. One, um, uh, the design review board reviewed this this evening. As Kevin re Kevin indicated, they issued a favorable recommendation. Um, and then in the staff report, just the one, make sure at the right times are there. Um, in keeping with Donna's comment about the potential for nuisance on noise for the site prep, um, we put in there Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on the weekends, uh, it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. with no work on Sundays. And then added, I guess Kevin said, uh, confirm with Kevin Soul. You dropped out for a second. Do you have me now? Yeah. 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 Uh, just, just to confirm. Uh, yeah. So you said yes to no work on holidays. I know you said that earlier. Yes. Yeah. So then, uh, uh, five C, five C would say no work on on Sundays and holidays. And how about the town engineer approved the um, the um, hydraulic stuff? Yes, this was reviewed by Jeff, and he gave it. He was okay. Okay. Does that does Jeff's review include the uh, five hundred pages of uh, engineering material they submitted with the details on <laughs> drainage and stormwater and traffic management? Did Jeff look at all that stuff, or are that's you... correct? That's okay. correct. Okay. I, in the future, I would prefer to see a statement by Jeff, even if it's only one or two sentences for the record. Um, okay. Feel more comfortable with wow. that. And, and especially if we had a chance. On, you know, I've been doing this on and off for a long time. I never saw a submittal of 500 pages of engineering stuff. It's mind boggling, especially looking at it on a little, uh, you know, a, a laptop computer. But okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, what's the sense of the commissioner? Are we like this enough to approve it? I, I, I'm, I feel like we, we have enough information. I'm, I'm willing to uh, support this proposal, although <laughs> I wish it wasn't another gas station, but that's for the people of uh, Canton to wrestle Can't with. Can't worry about We're it. We're only looking at an electric car dealership. Mike, what do you think? Mike? You couldn't tell from my ringing endorsement before I am for this one. <laughs> Kevin? Yeah, I'm okay. It's probably the quickest approval of any large development. 80,000 80, cubic yards of stuff moved. I did have a, you know, to, just to follow up on your, your, your comments there about the material being removed. And, you know, you're saying that the gas station is going to be done first. But then 
So your removal trucks would have to go through the service station. Yeah. To, <laughs> it just doesn't seem like it's the safest way to be done. But The people trying to go to the convenience st store are going to have to uh, be you careful. Watch out for falling rock, yeah. yeah. I think they'd have to phase it carefully. Uh, does someone want to make we, a motion? We, we, we have a, uh, a proposed motion in the uh, staff report. Yeah, I, actually, without having to read the whole thing, can we just make the motion as presented? Um, you can reference attachment A yeah, attachment, from yeah, staff yeah. report. I'll, I'll move uh, regarding, uh, I'll make a motion. A motion to approve application 70 uh, ZZ. S no, that's the ZC 2810 of 9 to 15 Albany 8 Turnpike LLC owner. Um, and that we approve the development with the um, subject to the conditions noted in, in uh, Appendix A, is it? Attachment. Attachment. Okay, attachment. Okay, so I'm, having, I'm trying to use my mouse on one computer and it's on, not attached to this one. Yeah, attachment A. We have a second. I'll second it. Second oh. by Mike Doyle. Further discussion. So attachment A, five uh, C. We're adding Ann Holidays, correct? That's correct. All right. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Those are national holidays or religious <laughs> holidays or what? It would have to be Connecticut holidays, wouldn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Any comment? Like holidays. I would just say holidays. Leave it at that. Just say holidays. They're not going to work on those days. Okay. So we had a second by whom? Mike? No more discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It carries 6 nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you all. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's great. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay, the next order of business is uh, application 20-11 of 22GC2012 LLC owner, Sandy's Plaza. Um, and we have uh, someone here, I guess it's Chris Miller. Mike, who's presenting? Andy? I see oh, you. Chris should be there to represent. <laughs> I'm just here. Hi, Andy. How are you? Okay. Who's going it, to tell us about the project? That's a, a typo, I believe, on the um on on the application. It's Chris Milliard uh oh. as the agent, and I'm here with Terry and Hahn. Uh, from LADA, and I'll let Terry Ann go through the site plan, and then uh, if there's any questions on the architecturals or if you want to review the, ar the architectural drawings, I can certainly guide through that as well. Uh, but I'll, I'll let okay. Terry Ann start off. Okay. Ann, I'm just, oh, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, good evening. This is Terry Ann Hahn, principal of LADA PC, um, where the site plan is for the project. Um, just a couple things. Um, Chris, I actually moved a couple slides around um, from last time. So um, it, you'll see it, you'll, you'll need to slide in a little bit sooner just because I figured we'd do that first. Um, so good the thing. site is known, uh, is known, of course, as Andy's Plaza, located on Hot Meadow Street and on Iron Horse Boulevard. Um, it is three and a half uh, acres in size um, uh, and um, is zoned uh, SC1 as it faces Hot Meadow Street and SC4 as it faces Iron Horse Boulevard. Um, the property, uh, the footprint is a, a little bit over 43,000 square feet with the ground level facing Hot Meadow Street and then also a second ground level facing Iron Horse Boulevard. Um, the... Um, 
obviously the plaza has been around for quite some time um, and that the Andy supermarket has been vacant. So um, this is an opportunity to sort of revitalize that uh, plaza and to um, get this sort of um, activated again. Uh, just for references, um, uh, I pulled up uh, some of the existing photos that were part of Chris's um, uh, discussion. And I, I think maybe Chris, you might want to talk about how you were planning on activating the building first. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, not a problem. So uh, right now it, it still remains as an existing uh, single tenant, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the majority of the building. And then there is also the the uh, liquor store that's on the right side, which is a, a tenant that's operating today and would remain to be operated. The the larger open tenant, which was the grocery store at one point, is intended to be divided up into a collection of uh, retail spaces, office space, and restaurant space. The proposed restaurant is is seen here on this floor plan on the kind of the bottom left corner. And what we're looking to do is add a small addition onto that restaurant, which would be utilized as the uh, drive-through for the building. Um, the, one of the, really the main reason for adding that addition is so that way that addition helps alleviate some of the uh, conditions and some of the challenges to the site plan layout for running a, a new drive-through site to that side of the building. We want to make sure that there's plenty of uh, pedestrian visibility and vehicular visibility as they come through that drive-through. So that, that was, that's really the main reason for adding that addition. But uh, as you can see from this plan here, immediately to the right of that addition would be a corridor that services the office space, proposed office spaces in back and can also be used as an egress corridor and even a corridor for restaurants to get to the trash and or, or for the for the tenants to get to the trash enclosure, which is on the lower level uh, along Iron Horse. The two tenants in the middle right now are proposed to be retail, and then the green, the two green tenants are proposed to be a potential office space. So we're we're not doing anything major to in terms of reconfiguration of the existing building, other than changing the demise interior and then changing some of the, uh, the door locations for each of these individual tenants. The building facade here is, is uh, primarily the existing facade that's getting refinished. We're looking to paint the brick, add new uh, cornice around the building, provide new uh, peaked uh, standing seam metal roofs at all the gables and then introducing some trim to highlight a few areas uh, and also to kind of soften the, the appearance that's there now, which is the brick, uh, darker color, red color brick and, and beige ephus. Introducing uh, fabric awnings, some gooseneck lighting. And then on the left, you'll see the, the new addition that we're attaching to the side of the building for the drive-through. And you can, I think this is a good image that, that shows, you know, a good reason why we're adding that addition is because as those cars come through and the pedestrians are walking along that sidewalk, we wanted to make sure there's a high level of visibility between the cars and pedestrians. So it's not a, a blind 90 degree corner. Um, just a, a close up view, uh, storefronts would be revised and modified as needed for, for new doors the ceiling of that colonnade would be replaced with uh, new material, new, new lighting, again, just to kind of refresh that, that um, those surfaces that are in there now. Uh, you can see the, the painted brick. The concrete block at the water table would remain. However, we're looking to provide a stain over that concrete block as each tenant uh, opens those tenant spaces would apply for their own signage permit. So right now we just have placeholders that are that are in those locations. Uh, and then a view of the existing liquor store, the the geometry as as the rest of the building is remaining the same, it would except for the new finishes that are being applied over it, the new fabric awnings again, the goosenecks, the the black standing seam roof. 
and then PVC paneling underneath those gable roof structures. Uh, another view of the, the addition for the drive-through, and you can, you can get a glimpse of it here a little bit, the new door that we're adding to the back of the building, which I think shows up in the next rendering a little bit better. Um, at the back of the building, we're making sure we have a, a door primarily for egress out of that office space. Uh, we see that door could potentially be used for employee access. Um, the, the main reason why this is not the secondary door is because we, we want to make sure people aren't walking across the drive through to get into the building. So we did provide access from the front of the building, the front parking lot into that corridor to get you to this office space. Um, so it would be a new door, a covered canopy, and then a little bit of a, a trellis to hide that exhaust vent that's coming up from the restaurant. At the back of the building, uh, again, more of the same painting, uh, fabric awnings, new goosenecks, metal roof. Uh, at the back of the existing groceries or, or previous grocery store, we're proposing new windows along the Iron Horse facade to allow sunlight into the building. And then directly below that on, on kind of the, the left of that facade would have a new trash enclosure with a, a swinging gate as opposed to the rolling uh, metal gate that's there now. Um, yeah, the, the 2Ds are, are really just more informational purposes only, I think, in terms of design and aesthetics. The, uh, the 3Ds are, are primarily uh, what to look at, but these do help understand what some of the finishes are and where we're proposing it. And, and as I mentioned, it's painted brick, stained concrete. Um, yeah, you can go to the next one. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Uh, so here's here's a good list of the materials. Uh, at the top is the standing seam metal roof, proposed gooseneck, uh, painted PVC fabric awning, painted brick. Uh, we we any storefront that we replace would be a, a black storefront to keep in theme with the the black and white color scheme. Stained split face uh, concrete block, metal gate. At the back of the building, there's a, a larger concrete wall just to the right of the restaurant that's there. So we're proposing to clad that with this barn wood uh, cladding that we're showing in this image. Again, that just helps make the building feel a little more pedestrian friendly. And then of course, uh, I mentioned the, the soffits underneath the colonnade wall be replaced. So at this point, just to be clear, we're, we're making um, uh, somewhat minimal changes on the site plan. Uh, the area in gray uh, represents the pavement that um, would have been removed and replaced um, in order to accommodate the addition, which is this pink color um, uh, off the, the building. I have an enlargement next. So you have a um, it's, there's a new drive-through window approximately in the right smack dab in the center of this picture. Um, but the idea is to um, uh, try and provide clear pedestrian vehicular um, access um, from the parking spaces to the front of the building and from the parking spaces to the back of the um, entry uh, for the office. Um, we'll be removing um, uh, impervious surface, because right now it's just a big asphalt um, area back there, uh, adding additional uh, grass and planting areas, um, and um, uh, providing for this, the new queue. The queue is actually, for the drive-through, is 14 cars, um, uh, which is considered the high uh, DOT standard, um, so that we were able to uh, accommodate that without interfering with uh, traffic in the vicinity. Um, the, um, the planting for the most part, um, we're trying to provide for um, some areas in the center island that could potentially be, um, it could be seeding at some point, um, but right now it's just seeded to lawn. Some, there's some minimal planting uh, required. You'll notice that there's a couple of small buildings off on the lower right-hand side. Those are sheds that are um, to remain their part of a, a monitoring program that has been in place uh, on the site for quite some time. So those those continue to, to remain. Um, so Terry, can I interrupt you while you still got that yep. page up? Yep. 
you know, I know you, you talked about, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about where that little sidewalk is that goes from the here? parking lot on the right. You know, there's a little, a little sidewalk there between the two greens. Right here. Nope, down, right here. down, down, down. This one? Near, near, near number six or nine, whatever it is. Um, I think that's a little sidewalk. Oh, no, 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 that's just a drainage leak off. Oh, okay, all that's right. That's a drainage leak off. I gotta get to the catch basin. Okay, all right. Yeah, no, 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 it's not a sidewalk. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's only like two feet wide um, is, is intended to be. It's, it's just drainage. Okay, because I, I don't want anybody walking over there. Yeah, because you're leading it right into where the signboard, which is the worst yeah. visibility. Yeah. No, no, no. It, it's just intended to be a, a leak off. We, what we could actually do is we could actually put a curb stop there so that there's, there's no issues because uh, you can get the water underneath the curb stop. But it, it, I need some runoff because right now my kid, there's an existing catch basin by that six that I need to get access to. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, then I guess you know we'll we'll I still need to address you know when you come out those doors where people would go. There well, is at no this point, I, I am assuming that if they're coming out of the the office doors, they're going to take this the sidewalk that's on the bottom of the circle here and go to the parking spaces. Okay. Instead of going to the grass. Okay. Correct. Correct. You don't want them any. The, there's no reason for them to come across this area here. Okay. And there's bollards here also. So, you know, I, I mean, it's, I'm trying to make it as unfriendly to make that pedestrian movement as possible. Well, it, yeah, and maybe even more than bollards. Can we even do a fence? Um, you mean like a, like a little um, wrought iron? Um, yeah, wrought iron, black nut wrought iron or whatever, white, mm -hmm. everything else is white, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. know, something to keep them from going into that traffic queue. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that's not the intent to go across there, let's make it difficult. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, so just to continue on, there are existing light yeah. fixtures um, in the uh, uh, throughout the plaza. It's actually um, they're very they're short. They're older. Um, they don't have uh, they're not LED, uh, and they in general the the whole plaza, both the Hot Meadow Street side and the Iron Horse side, are is very dark. Um, and so uh, one of uh, the proposals here is to use a similar light fixture to what is currently there, um, but make it an LED fixture uh, and to um, uh, upgrade the light that's available out there uh, so that that that's um, use the, the fixtures um, that are that are similar to what they have and just make it better, better lit. It, it's all LED fixtures. Um, so, you know, the light is up in the cone. Um, but uh, they are consistent with what's currently out there. And they're dark sky, Terry? Uh, yeah, they should be dark sky compliant. Thank you. Yeah. But I think that, you know, that's pretty much um, uh, all the site plan elements. It's, it's not a lot of, um, you know, uh, big change, but it should help really change the character of the plaza as a whole, um, as well as sort of bringing it up to current levels. Chris or Andy, is there anything that you'd like to add? I don't think you uh, put it pretty well, Terry. No, we, I, I guess I'll, I'll add that, um, you know, working with Terry, we, we've explored many options on this drive through and, and how to get it to fit in there. And honestly, this is, I think this is option five or six, yeah. um, which, uh, you know, I think each option was unique, but this, this option that we're presenting tonight, I believe, addresses probably the, the most important which we think is uh, safety and, and concern for pedestrians and vehicles on, on the site. So I, I am pleased with this layout. You know, ho hopefully everyone else is as well on this, but uh, you know, I'm interested to hear everyone's comments. I would also note that we were in front of design review tonight um, and they did give us a positive recommendation. Okay, comments from uh, commission members. Donna? You're, you're muted. Okay. Um, 
it seemed like in one of the renderings on the uh, Iron Horse side, the um, the pub that's down there currently, they lost some outdoor seating, or are they just taking uh, seating in an area that they that's it's supposed to be parking? It just seemed like they were losing some of their outdoor uh, dining. No, it, it, if it's shown that way, it, it's certainly not intended to. You know, we rendering is the renderings are meant to focus on the buildings. Um, it is not the intent to modify the seating that's currently there. Okay. Um, the pub, the it was just a question. Donna, did they did the expand their uh, seating area right now for temporary outdoor seating? That's what so I was wondering. In, yeah, they're into a few parking spots okay, right now. So that's, that's just, just part, part of, of the, okay. okay that's, that's part that of the, the pandemic. Right, yeah. right. Ian, you have any comments? You're, you're muted again. You're muted, Ian. We don't hear you yet. Do you know sign language? <laughs> Mike, are you able to unmute it? Mike, Mike, you got a comment while Ann figures out what her... Am I unmuted? Now you're, now you're okay. I'm okay now. Okay. Echoing. There. And you got two have, going. Yeah. All right. Let me hang up your phone. I think your um, thing is working. I can't, I can't hang up the phone because I have to hear. No. So skip over me. Skip over. You can cover the mouthpiece on your phone. That might work. Mike? Um. I have. I actually don't have any uh, questions, Mr. Chairman. This is a pretty cool looking project. I'm excited to see it hopefully come to fruition. Dan, you want to go back? Try again. Now we don't hear it. How about Bruce? Now you're not. You're. Not. I don't hear you. Suddenly we've got everybody in trouble here. <laughs> okay, I got a question about the car flow into the drive-in, drive-up place. I see two lanes coming out. Can you explain how people come in? Mm -hmm. Is there a signage plan? At the moment, there is not a signage plan. The thought is that one will be developed as each tenant arrives at the center, um, not knowing exactly how much square footage each tenant will take and, and what the size of their sign will be. Uh, we'll have to obviously put together a unified signage plan for the site. Okay, well, this is so not part of this application anyway. No, it is not. Okay, now you're going to answer the question about the traffic flow. Yep. All right. So the the way that the traffic flow into the center is right now is this. Is, whoops, that's a little over enthusiastic. Sorry. This is the um, uh, enter. This is an exit, right? So um, you would need to. The other choice is that you could come down this way. So theoretically, you could come in here and go this way or you would come in just like everybody else does and do that. Does that okay. make sense? It seems like there's a pinch point there where the exit to your, um, Here. your double exit. That, yeah. Yeah, that, that's correct. And that was something that we looked at in depth. I mean, we actually made sure that there was plenty of views um, in, in, for the most part, um, if you're coming out of here, you can then exit this way, um, or theoretically, you could exit this way. Um, but we were trying to get the maximum queue so that this zone okay, um, didn't have overlap. 
Okay. That answers my question. Other questions? Bruce, other than the sign? No? <laughs> this is a uh, difficult thing to do. We can't vote because they can't say anything. Thumbs up. Oh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, all right. Any any more comments on on uh, the proposed layout? And it looks like a really nice to me. It looks like a really nice uh, refurbishment of that area and a good use for it. Um, Mike, uh, any comments from uh, staff report? So so we've been working with the applicant on this uh, the, this uh, proposal. Um, and you have a favorable motion from me um, with just some consideration. One is that, you know, that, that the approval is for the renovation of the facade and the other interior site improvements, uh, separate approvals. Obviously we've, we've said it several times. It will be for signs and details on the menu board. Um, menu board locations approved as submitted. Changes to location will require submittal uh, site plan modification, mainly because that whole traffic pattern is kind of set up right now for the 14 cars queued uh, without having overflow into the travel travel lane. The last one is just specific to the restaurant fit out. And this was from both from the uh, health district and from the uh, fire of the uh, WPCA. Um, should we, you do a change to fit out the restaurant the kitchen layout has to be approved by the Farmington Valley Health District, which is standard, and that uh, WPCA will have some uh, service charge fees associated with the sewer bill for that tenant. But that's just standard, uh, not a not a big surprise. Otherwise, I had no uh, negative comments from uh, either my, my office or uh, the others. Um, what is the time frame of this uh, proposal? Chris? What, what kind of time frame? Andy, you could answer. Yeah, well, once we get approval, I mean, well, um, <laughs> right now we don't have, uh, unfortunately, it's been empty for eight years, and, uh, you know, we've had numerous um, uh, tenants fall through. So uh, we're going, trying to go in a different direction. So we took down the dry cleaner. It's time for him to retire anyways. And um, we will start the uh, improvements as, as soon as possible. So right now, there, I mean, as far as tenancies goes, we really have no tenants lined up. So we're sort of, I don't want to say shooting in the dark here, but we feel that a, um, a drive, especially a, a drive through component would be in the center of Sisbury would be, would enhance someone, somebody, would entice somebody to come here. But okay. as far as the overall facade improvements, we'll, we'll get going on right away. I don't think you'll go painting in the fall or in the winter, but I mean, obviously springtime, you line everything up. Okay. Are we in agreement to uh, go ahead with uh, in a, a motion? Mike says yes. Bruce is nodding, I think. Okay. <laughs> Donna, you've got voice, right? I, I, uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, approve application ZC20-11 of 22 GC 2012 LLC owner Chris Miller, agent for site plan amendment for an addition to the existing Andes Plaza and site improvements um, with the following conditions listed in attachment A dated October 5th, 2020. Uh, one modification, it's Chris Miller, not, not Miller. Okay. I still second it. We have a second by Mike. Further discussion? All in favor, say aye, aye. or signify with your... <laughs> aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, it passes six to nothing. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for consideration. Thank you, everyone. Okay. 
The next order of business is our um, regulations update workshop continuation. Um, I thought at the end of our last meeting that we were, that Mike was going to edit the uh, the regulations draft that he had supplied, and I didn't get that. Did anybody? Mike? So I, I, I gave an edited version. Uh, I apologize. We had a little issue with uh, Dropbox over the weekend. Um, it was in, I uploaded a revised document today, uh, removed the old one, put a new one in there. It includes um, the temporary sign uh, regs, you know, consolidated one for the um, non-residential zoning districts. I, I didn't see that. I did anybody else look at that? Anybody else find it? I believe it's under the regulations way. folder in Dropbox. It's under sign regulations. Under the under sign regulations, there's a there's a document, but I believe it's the same draft that you gave us. So let me make sure. You know, I've, yeah, I yeah, I don't I. I apologize. I don't know why I uploaded it today. You're right, Dave. It's still it's missing the, the non-residential zoning districts. Um, let me try to I can email it to the commission right now. Mike, the thing that you know, I looked at our regulations as they exist in our current document. And then I looked at the uh, regulations where you lined out the things that didn't work and kind of formatted something that um, would replace the sign regulation section um, without that uh, non-residential temporary uh, section. But what bothers me is I, I'm not sure that I understand clearly what it is that results from this. Um, what are we missing? What What are we giving up by wiping out those sections that are not conforming uh, in terms of what we'll see in the street? So, so what what we're going to give up is is the different little classes that are created. So each one, like a real estate sign or a um, freedom of speech sign or a um, you know, contractors billboard, uh, or when I say billboard, it's just that the construction sign they can put up. Um, yeah. We have all those different things. Um, courtesy of that federal court case, we can't do that anymore. It just has to be in a zoning district, you get X square footage. We don't care how you use it, but that's what you get. So I th that my, when I kind of put this, the, the proposal together, um, I kind of started thinking about frequency of of the types of signs that I've been seeing the past seven years in residential and non-residential zoning districts and you know based by then by frequency like size like what goes out the most um, what's appropriate to say in like a for example if we're just specific to temporary signs um, in a, a residential zoning district, you know, what's reasonable to say is a, a sign that's as of right, that doesn't require a permit. So six square feet, for example, the average political sign, I'd say doesn't need a permit. Um, but the one thing that, that, that we're going to lose is because we can no longer classify signs based on the user, um, we get into this just strict, it's math. It's just going to be math in either number, duration, size, height. That's what we can regulate only now, um, which gets, that's the trade-off we're going to lose. Because I think that there's a, there's definitely a difference in those, although you can't go to that, what they call a, a, like a class system of signage, having a class system gives you the ability to say certain things are customer and incidental and certain things are not and, and warrant a, a higher degree of approval. Well, we still can require unified sign plans for multi-tenant sites. Correct. Right? And so when we do that, don't we have 
sort of the same freedoms that we have today in terms of dictating the use of single single colors or you know the colors and the uh, no logos and that sort of thing. So I, I actually that's one of the questions I asked to Bob whether just to make sure we don't get into issues with content uh, based regulations. I'm waiting on Bob. I sent a draft copy of of the the proposal to Bob DiCrescenzo to look at too, yep. just just to say, hey, am I on the am I on the on the am I following the, the law based on this setup? And then furthermore, here's a few other areas I'd like to a little more feedback to say, can we still do this? Um, which is kind of gray right now based on the the language on the regs, the uh, decisions. I Personally, I think that in the center zone, you can do that. But okay. I want Bob D. I want Bob D. to agree with me on that, because okay. he's going to have to defend it if someone challenges it. Okay. Anybody else have comments about it? Well, uh, first and foremost, the the polished document, Mike, that you put in Dropbox, you did put in uh, four twenty one on today. It's in the regulations folder, not in the signage regulations folder. Uh, and oh, I apologize. Sign regulation by zone. No, it is there. It just was in a different. Still, I think we ought to wait for Bob D's answer to these questions before we settle on it. Um, I, I kept reading it and saying, what are we really losing? Well, I didn't see that we were really losing a lot, uh, even though we took out a whole lot of language. But I don't know if anybody else feel that way or not. Anyway, let's let's defer that and, and pick it up again next time. Mike, did you get any, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Mike Glidden, did you get any comment from Bob D on the, on the I, uh, rules thing? I emailed him and asked for an answer on that. So I'm waiting for an answer on the Robert rules and I apologize. I saw your email. I, I bored him and said, I need an answer for that. So I'll try to get that for the next meeting from him. Okay. That, that can wait. There's nothing urgent there, I don't think. Anything else that we should be looking at? No. No. The only thing I just want to make the commission aware of was tonight, there was a very brief preliminary presentation from Chris Nelson um, Nelson Construction for the redevelopment of the Simscroft Echo Farms uh, construction yard on Iron Horse Boulevard. Uh, Chris Nelson is under contract to purchase the property, and they did a, a kind of brief presentation. Their plans, the, the preliminary plans that they have, are uploaded to the website on under the design review uh, board's um, page. Um, design review will be discussing it again to kind of finalize some comments that we're going to get out to them. But they had some very, you know, pointed comments that they gave to the applicants, such as one thing one member was looking for was a little more uniqueness in the character of the design of the buildings. But I mean, it's a it's a it's a proposal that's for a multifamily uh, development in the center. Five buildings of about thirty. 37 apartments laid out. And uh, it, it looks like a nice layout, but as the comment in the design review board was, it, it's a little like High Crop and some of the other apartment buildings. Could, can you come up with something more creative and different? Um, so Chris Nelson and, and his partner, Ron, is it? No, actually, he's with he's partnered on this one with Allied Builders, um, T and M Homes. Um, I'm trying to remember uh, his name. It's a different partner for this this Bob. project. Is it Bob? I think it may have been Bob. Yeah, anyway, yeah. So they're going to go back and look at it and uh, massage their uh, designs and and come back to the design review board. But basically, we're looking at uh, apartments with. Uh, an affordable housing component that will be deed restricted as required by the state. And uh, anyway, that's that's what we're looking at. Yeah, and if anyone's interested in it, I can email the plans directly to you. Yeah, we 
You'd have to get the link to the design review board. They're different. It's a different uh, drop it's right on their agenda. It's really easy to get to. Just go to the, you know, just Google mm -hmm. or if you search engine Simsbury uh, design review board and you just tick on their most recent agenda, all the attachments are right there. It's actually a pretty nice layout. I like that. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have. Okay. Somebody with a voice can say. <laughs> Motion to adjourn, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Second. Second by Donna. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, yeah. passing six nothing. <laughs>